Hi everyone and welcome to the print production and color theory course. In this video I'm going to talk about the basics of general color theory and for some of you it may be a review. You may have had this information in an art course or in an earlier design course but it's great info that always can uh, bear repeating. And a couple of comments that I'm going to make firstly is that this course deals more with the print production as opposed to screen based work. So the colors we're going to talk about and the color spaces that you're going to use in this course in your projects will be based upon the print color space which is called CMYK and we'll talk about that in a subsequent video uh, but when I talk about primary colors and uh, CMYK and uh, painting or pigment type colors. That's what this course is more based on. So I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, and also, this is kind of an interesting side note, we're going to discuss, of course, the colors that we can see in our visual spectrum. There are colors on the spectrum that we can't see, such as ultraviolet or infrared, and I find it fascinating to realize that there are colors that we can't perceive. But, of course, we have to just work with what we can see, so we will be covering the visible spectrum, obviously, in this course. Now, the color wheel, which is what I'm going to start with, I want to hop over to this website for a moment, colorlovers.com, something you can go to and explore should you wish to. But uh, the history of the color wheel, apparently it is attributed to Sir Isaac Newton, who in early 1700s arranged the colors in a circular format. And that really helps us as we study color relationships and color theory and how the colors actually can fit together and work together and gives us an understanding of their relationships. And putting them in a wheel is a great way to do that. So Sir Isaac Newton has uh, been attributed to that information. Now here is the color wheel. I've uh, put these different types together for you to show you basic color relationships here. Now it doesn't really matter on the color wheel which one is on top. I just happen to put the violet on the top. But you'll see that there are 12 different segments to this and these are 12 different colors but of course within the range of these you can get you know, millions of different shades and tints and uh, different variations. But these are the basic color names. Now the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. And a minute ago I mentioned that there, this course is dealing more with pigment or ink or paint or printable colors. The primary colors of printable and pigment-based colors are, as you see here, red, yellow, and blue. If you are working with screen-based color, such as for websites or screen presentations, your primary colors will be what's called RGB, which is red, green, and blue. So it is a little different for screen-based colors. Here we'll be discussing the uh, pigment-based colors. So these are called the primary colors, and you know that they are uh, basic colors that you can use to mix other colors from. Here is a color wheel of something called the secondary colors, the violet, the orange, and the green. Okay. Now you'll notice that you, you uh, achieve orange if you have paint or ink or pigment by mixing the red and the yellow. You get the orange. If you mix yellow and blue, you get the green, and the blue and the red, you'll get violet. Now I just want to mention here that violet and purple are synonymous. You can interchangeably use those terms. So by mixing different primary colors, you achieve your secondary colors. There is a third category that you can see here, and these are called tertiary colors, and we have six of them. These are the ones that have the hyphenated name, the longer names, because as you can see, they are in between the primary and the secondary colors. And I find that these are the most interesting colors. They seem to have the most personality. They are... Um, you know, more interesting and more dynamic, I think, than the straight primaries, although all of them certainly have their uses. And lastly, we're going to look at complementary colors. These are any color 
that is opposite from one another on the color wheel. All right, you can see clearly red and green are complements, blue and orange, yellow, orange, and blue, violet. Here are two complements right here. And by the way, the word complementary in this case is spelled with an E. The word spelled with an I means to pay someone a compliment. Complement means things that work well together. So just note the spelling there. Uh, there is a difference. Okay, so those are examples of the different types of uh, relationships on the color wheel. I'm going to go through this short PowerPoint that discusses some of the other aspects of color theory. And again, this is just a brief introduction for you. I'm going to talk also in another video about color schemes, but here is a quick intro to one color scheme, which is called an analogous triad. Analogous is a word that means something that is right next to something else. So any three or four colors that are next to one another on this color wheel is known as an analogous, in this case it's a triad because there are three, but any group of colors that are adjacent are, are called analogous and you can create an analogous color scheme. Generally, in groups of three, they make really good color schemes for most uses. They will always work well together because they're related. And of course, uh, you can get different moods and feelings depending upon the colors that you use. So the word analogous is one to remember. It just means next to. Now, this is an interesting color scheme that you don't hear a lot about, but I find it really helpful to uh, you know, to remind you about this or to show you about this. This particular diagram shows something called a split complementary and it's a really cool color scheme to keep in mind. If you for instance wanted to use a yellow but you didn't want the stark jarring contrast of the purple directly across it, if you felt it would be too much, and it sometimes is, try something called a split complementary. That would be taking the color next to the purple on either side, in this case the blue purple and the red purple, and then using that with your yellow. And uh, color theorists use this, uh, floral designers use this technique, this particular uh, approach. Interior designers use it, and you can certainly use it in your own work. It softens the stark contrast between the complementaries, and it, but it gives a nice contrast at the same time and a little bit more interest. So remember the split complementary rule. It's a really good one for simple design color schemes. Okay, the term value means the lightness or darkness of a color. All right, you might see it uh, also as the term brightness. If you, in um, Photoshop and Illustrator, you have in your color palette, you have a couple different uh, spaces you can work in to make your colors, and you might see the term brightness, and that's the same thing, lightness or darkness of a color. You can see here how adding light and dark to the color red really changes its personality. In fact, red is one of those colors that actually changes its name when it becomes lightly tinted. It becomes, of course, pink, which is very different from red. So the other colors tend to just get lighter and they keep the same name, but this particular one, red does kind of switch over to pink. Also note that when you tint a color, it does not mean you're making it more transparent. You're keeping the opacity of these colors is completely opaque. It would cover up anything under it in a design. You're just making it actually lighter. So keep in mind the difference between tinting and making something transparent. Here's a simple chart that shows the effect of adding white and dark to, uh, to colors. And you can see the personality, for instance, of the yellow changes dramatically when you start to darken it down. Intensity is also known as saturation, and they use the term saturation in Illustrator and Photoshop in the color menus, but it just means how bright and intense a color is. You'll notice the yellow is much more intense and saturated on the top than it is down at the bottom here when it's been mixed with other colors. 
And this is a tip that painters use, and you can keep this in mind too for your own color mixing. If you want to dull a color down, you can add the complementary color. And again, I've seen painters using this a lot. Adding a little bit of green to red will give it a brownish color. Um, adding a little bit of orange to the color blue will give you different, um, much more subtle and uh, toned down uh, pigments and colors to dull the intensity. So terms to know to wrap this up are hue, which is the basic color, the name of the color, where it lives on the color wheel or the spectrum, value, also known as brightness, lightness or darkness, and intensity, also known as saturation. Those are the three basic uh, components that create colors, and you're given um, hue, saturation, and brightness sliders in your color panels in both Illustrator and Photoshop that allow you to mix literally millions of colors that can be matched to print colors. And you, knowing and understanding how the value and the intensity work together and practicing with those uh, color models in those programs will really help you to start to understand the relationships. So in further videos, we'll talk about color schemes and color psychology and color ideas for you that will all help you as you go forward to create your designs. Thanks and good luck.